Yeah, we were super excited to have the only research tuk-tuk perhaps in the world, right? And certainly in the United States. It's an eye-attractive, wonderful vehicle that lets us set up in remote locations like the National Mall here in Washington, D.C., where we can conduct our research and bring in the most diverse sample possible. We're trying to figure out uh, if people have different types of preferences for produce grown with different types of water. The waters that we are using is conventional, which is your traditional irrigation water, uh, well water, surface water, that sort of thing. Uh, black water, recycled black water, which is recycled water from toilets. Recycled gray water, which is recycled water from washing machines, dishwashers, your kitchen sink, that sort of thing. Uh, and then recycled produced water, which is recycled water from oil and gas drilling. One of the novel things about this research is it's really a collaboration with the United States Department of Agriculture. And that helps us have our research questions be more tightly defined and to have broader policy implications. So we've been happy to be supported by the Economic Research Service and the National Institute for Food and Agriculture. One, it's actually doing the research about the use of wastewater, which is a strategy to deal with future water shortages. But two, they're raising awareness among the average person as well as people who work at USDA and manage programs about the power of behavioral economics. Water is very important to human survival. Uh, we're made up mostly of water. The quality of our water is very important to our health. Would you like to know more about the water that was used to produce your food? Is that something that as a consumer you wish you saw more of? When I talk, talk to the local farmers that I buy from the farmers market, that never, never absolutely comes up. never yeah. comes up. Uh, you know uh, how you uh, how you're watering. Before I took the test, I was not aware of black water and uh, the processed water. And we know that consumers do care a lot about their food, and so we do anticipate that as they start learning about the water that was used for producing it, they'll start caring about what the source was. And this gives us a chance to understand this before the. Uh, before the issue emerges on a national scene, we're looking five, 10 years into the future about the future of our food. The results of our research can be used in lots of different formats. One is it can be used to help inform farmers who are using non-traditional water know how to best use it and communicate their messages to consumers. It allows retailers to understand how to talk about water use and their food. And it ultimately helps consumers inform what kind of foods are out there, how are they safe, what's the production. And ultimately all of those things have policy implications as U.S. considers more and more how to deal with its limited water resources to produce food. These are things that we want to understand and have our results impact.